Hello and welcome to the Cloud Blue Podcast post match reaction sponsored by NordVPN. All the details for NordVPN are where, Matt? In the description. Oh, in the description, so I'm through me then. I forgot this. <laughs> so perfect. I was going to go straight into rap mode. And you, as you super polished and perfect. No, no, no. Uh, all the information you need is in the description down below. I'm your host, Dan Rowlett. I'm joined by Matt Kendrick, live, or well, not live, this is a pre record, live and direct from your house again um, due to various circumstances. So hopefully the visual and audio is okay. Are you okay? I'm a bit flat. Yeah, to me be too. Honest, I'm feeling like quite, quite crestfallen. I thought it was a. Uh, all in the bag. I oh, know. Can I say it's up? Yeah, yeah. So sure. I know sometimes on our description it says no swears and stuff, but uh, yeah. yeah, it went so quite quickly, didn't it? Quite spectacular. When I saw the team news come out, I thought that's a strong team. I think that's probably our strongest. I don't think you could have named anybody stronger other than <laughs> Teddy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you could argue maybe GRB starts somewhere and Tielemans plays and Rogers doesn't possibly, and maybe that's stronger. Yeah. Incidentally, I thought Rogers played very well and took his goal brilliantly. But when the team came out, I thought, yeah, that's probably our strongest team. That's a really nice team. Should be more than capable of, of beating a pretty rubbish Brentford side this season. And it pretty much went like that for, for most of the first half, at least. We spoke recently, me and John, I think it was on either last week's episode or the one before, about our record after half time being a bit shaky and all. Oh, why is that? Yeah. And we come out and score instantly. And me and my dad are like, well, this should be one of those games where it's a 3 0, 4 0. Good for the goal difference. Um, but Douglas Lowe, he's off at 60 minutes. You know, just don't get that silly book in. Uh, this will be absolutely fine. And a mad nine minutes from Brentford ruins it. Morgan Rogers' goal to make it 2 0 seems like weeks ago. Uh, yeah. the, the, diff- the, the disappointment of conceding the first goal, the second goal, and the third goal still seems really, really, really raw. Um, and it felt quick. Well, I checked it obviously before we came on that it was nine minutes. The first two were two minutes apart, and then the other one six or seven after. But it felt like all of them came in about the space of 30 seconds. It just relentless. Yeah, it felt a little bit like to me, and I don't want to be too doom and gloom because I think we do need to take it in the context of the season and stuff. But it's often my frame of reference, isn't it? Going back to the O'Neill days, it felt a little bit, a bit like following the Moscow game. Yeah, like we had kind of had to win today. Still to game, put sense, pressure yeah. on ourselves by by going, you know, by rotating, shall we speak, at, at Man City. People could understand the thinking behind it, but the purpose was that was to make sure they absolutely nailed these three points today. Yeah. Um, and it looked like we were doing it. I think I thought we did the hard bit by breaking Brentford down yeah, in yeah, the first yeah. place. I thought that they were quite regimented, but had the capability to spring us on the break. Mm. But to get that first goal, I think it, <laughs> it sounds silly, isn't it? Doesn't it? Football can be a complex game when we talk about XG and we talk about you know kind of the the, the obsession there with kind of stats and and tactics. But it was a, it was a case of delivering the ball into the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get that ball into the box, and you do it with pace, and you do it before the defence is set, and you can score goals. Both of our, our well, we'll say both of our, our goals. The first goal and the third goal came from that by delivering the ball yeah. clinically. Their goals. The first goal. I've not I've not seen them back. I've no, seen I've the not. first goal replay back on the big screens at Villa Park, and yeah. it just like. I'm not sure they they even had control of the ball, did yeah. they? It looked like it, 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 it all felt very preventable. And yeah. it is a bit of a cliche, but when you're tuning up against a side that is lesser than you and you are in somewhat control, you don't go to 3 2, do you? Even if you get it to 2 2 and you kind yeah. of go, right, okay, abandon everything we're doing, shut up shop, just keep it at this. Yeah. To let them go ahead in the game is very unlike the, the Aston Villa that we're now used to. And it concerns me a little bit. That, that we've, we've still seen got a lot of in goals, Sam. Yeah. The moment, so I don't know if I've got it on my, my phone, but there's a stat, I might be able to put it up on there. A stat about the amount of goals we'll have conceded compared to what the um, <coughs> teams around us. Liverpool conceded 28, Man City conceded 31, Arsenal conceded 24. We've conceded 49 goals now. Mm. Um, Is this so, after today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the, the, the tweeter has put, to put that in, into context, Everton have conceded 42. Mm. And it's like we do seem to have that. I think we've described it as a bit of a soft underbelly before, haven't we? Uh, and Which is all right if you're winning games three two. Yeah, well, listen, yeah, you know, and I, I thought we might even sneak in, <laughs> too, sneak yeah. four three at the end, but I think we kind of cooked our goose by then. We? That's a good phrase. You don't hear that very often <laughs> these days, do you? Cooked our goose. Yeah, it's just very, very, very frustrating. And 
I just don't really know where it's come yeah. from because I felt once it went two 0 I was of that moment. Maybe I felt a certain complacency, and maybe did some of the other the rest of the crowd did. Whether that is what the players feel or not is obviously uh, speculation, but. You just think, well, this is routine now. We're turning up 47 minutes into the game. Like We should see this out comfortably. It's a massive three points. We kind of go over to you, Tottenham. We've done our bit. It's another win for us. Yeah. To have that mad nine minutes where every goal felt preventable. Again, not seeing them back, but every goal in my mind at least came from Ezra Conser's right-hand side, a very easy ball into the box, very yeah. easy um, getting the ball over the line. Just several occasions where you think, well, if you'd not done that and you'd not done that, that goal was just no chance of it even happening. But to capitulate in that manner, uh, I suppose the added context is it, it feels like a defeat, doesn't it? And we do come back to, does, to get a it point. It does feel like a defeat, point but in that I, think, game. I think dropping dropping two points at home is effective. You know, we, we tried to say what was the West Ham point <laughs> yeah. didn't we, the other week was that two, two point points, game yeah, or, yeah. Or, or whatever. And I think, I think that did well, that, that could be put down as point game. But it's two points. That's not a point game. Somebody tweeted me this on the way here, Sam. I think we can definitely say it was two points dropped tonight. And I was like, oh, we, we were technically <laughs> losing at one point and we come back to get a point. So officially, it probably does go down as a point gain because we're, we're in a losing position. But yeah, if you turn it up at home to a side that you're definitely better than, you've got to win. It's as simple yeah. as that. And these are the games that, and again, hopefully the, by the end of the time, the t- by the time the end of the season comes, we'll look back on this and it won't matter. But when you see what other sides do when they could just keep churning out results, a home game against a side that is what five or six points above safety, and you tune them up at half time, they win, and that's those are those yeah. results that you just grind out and see through, get over the line, and, and pick up the points. And Villa weren't able to see it through for whatever reason. Yeah, and I think that the goal, the way the goals come, one to concede one could probably be complacent, two is careless, yeah. and three is bordering on a catastrophe, really, because <coughs> they didn't really. I think with Brentford, you always feel they can. Mm. They've got they've got pace. There's some they've good players in there. Yeah. You always think they're capable of it. But I didn't feel first half. I thought it was us pushing and knocking at the door. And, yeah. You know, have you seen that? I've seen a lot of stuff with post match chatter about the um, the penalty shout on Carlos. Carlos. I've, and I the can't, foul got given against him. Yeah, I can't remember it at the time, but there seemed to be a bit of a roar that it was should have been the other way from what I've seen on Twitter. But I don't. But even so, yeah, you know, we've gone to we've gone to and given ourselves that. <clears> yeah. Um, and like you said, the team's knocking on the door of Champions League. Find a way. And yeah. we have a yeah, lot of the season. Yeah, we've, of course, we've, yeah. we've, we've found a way to do it. It was a bit kind of Man United-esque <laughs> today. <laughs> oh, you know, in terms of that, that capitulation. Yeah. Um, but then we have... It does feel like we're talking about a defeat. We do find a way back into it to an extent. Like There are years, go, years gone by when we do lose that. The guy next to me was saying, like, oh, this is a disaster and whatnot. And it feels like it. But I was like... The one tiny, <coughs> tiny positive here is that we're still half an hour to go. Like there's time for us to get back into this. The third Brentford goal comes on the 90th minute. Yeah, obviously it's totally different. And when we got the third, I thought, I thought like you, okay, well, we'll we, we will keep pushing here, and maybe we'll have time to get it. But it shouldn't have got to that point in in the first in the first instance. I mean, the first half kind of average heat map. I've not seen them, but I'd imagine every Villa player is in the opposition half. Martinez probably spent more time in the centre circle than he has in his own yeah. box at times because we're just so pushing onto them so high. The ball is up, the onus is on us to control the game and keep the ball. And Brentford are going to sit in deep, and we knew they'd do that. When you go 2 0 up, you think, well, they're going to have to come out now, so that leaves space for us. We'll get in there 3 0, 4 0, everything's happy, happy and dandy. And well, they didn't have to come out, it's just they actually come out. <laughs> no, they actually scored, I know. Came out and scored yeah. three times. I can't. Like I, don't, so I don't want to be the, the world's biggest doom woman, but I can't take any pleasure in that. Not yet. I can't take any pleasure in that point. It's like, no, no. Of, like lose, winning, getting a lot of tricky, lottery ticket for a million pounds, losing that, but oh, you found a scratch card that <laughs> wins you a pound <laughs> on the way back. Yeah. And then you've got the pound, and then Douglas always gets booked, so somebody's <laughs> going to punch and kick you in the nuts anyway. Oh, so God. I just... You, it just, I mean, that was always on the cake. That, wasn't it? that was, I, would, I tweeted it on the way up on the car. That is the most frustrating part of today. And there was plenty, plenty to do. <laughs> that nine minutes is really the most frustrating part. But for Douglas Sweet to almost successfully uh, navigate his yellow card suspension tightrope, which is the only phrase you're hearing in journalism and nothing else, for 96 and a half minutes and get all the way through. And that wasn't even a tackle that they didn't make. It was. It was definitely a yellow and a foul. No no compliance at all from that point. And it's absolutely stupid. But why do it? It's actually actually the last kick of the game. 
What's he, what's he doing? I think he's been competitive and thinking we can still go and, no, go and win the game, but you need to play with your head, don't you? Yeah, and he knew straight away, I've been booked, I'm going to miss it. The coaches, they knew it was going to happen, yeah. they were, like, that it was going to happen. He seen walk down the tunnel with his shirt. Yeah, like, he straight away, did, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like he knows he's messed up big time. My only thing would be, and I don't know whether Emery and the coaches will be thinking this during the game, is that, and this is obviously with hindsight, Dul Suiz could have came off when Tielemans did. And that yeah. game probably still finishes three all. Like it didn't yeah. make those subs made no impact really. Yeah. But we could have saved Douglas Louise for Arsenal and Bournemouth, which they are now much more difficult to get points out of because yeah. we haven't got him. So as much as drawing three all with a Brentford team that we should be beating is crap, to lose Douglas Louise like that with literally the last kick of a shin of the game is outrageous. It just sums up the carelessness. Yeah. You know, like you said, it's carelessness from, from Louise to put himself in that position anyway. He's <laughs> careless of, of the manager for not thinking that's a tactical substitute. But maybe they don't think like that. Maybe I think we've got more chance of getting 4-3 well, but... here with Louise on than Tiedemans. But again, yeah, I don't think it makes any difference, does it? No, listen, he, he gets his subs right more often than not, but you know, I'm not sure that I think I'd have had Bailey on there till the end. No, I wouldn't either. I'd have, I'd have, you know, I wouldn't have taken him off. I'd have left Bailey on till the, till the end. Mm. And, and done it like that but we're all the uh, what it might have known to call it Monday morning quarterback I think it was really <laughs> super wise after the event so. yeah well there's a little bit of that but it's just just super frustrating we'll just like a short break from our post-match chat to uh, say thank you to our sponsors NordVPN and play our stupid advert that we filmed on the bus being a working from home bore can take its toll. So occasionally I swap my tracksuit bottoms for actual trousers and head into the office on the bus. Even from the top deck of the number nine, the graft never stops, sparking up my laptop to play through a list of urgent business critical tasks. After all, the brilliant dad jokes I deliver on Claret and Blue don't write themselves. Of course, traveling by public transport and using public Wi-Fi on my phone hotspot makes me, my laptop and my hilarious gags susceptible to attack. Not anymore, thanks to NordVPN. Now I can craft my side-splittingly funny funnies without fear of lurking comedians hacking into my computer to steal my material and passing it off as their own on Live at the Apollo. To get the best discount of your NordVPN plan, go to nordvpn.com forward slash claret and blue. Our link will also give you four extra months for free on the two-year plan. There's no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link you need is in the podcast description below. NordVPN is like me having my own little cyber buzz bouncer. Oi, baldy. Shift. Although it still doesn't stop the big kids kicking me out of my own seat. Just explain that to people who are thinking, what the hell? What the hell was that? We're, we're giving the brief more. <laughs> Imagine if that was the brief we're given. That was the brief we're that. given. We're given the brief. Thought, no, stick your brief. We've got this instead. As you'd imagine, <clears throat> the, the, our kind sponsors want us to be invested in this. Yeah. In this service, and what better way to do it than to create a fict- fictitious <laughs> situation whereby <laughs> I'm trying to write dad jokes on the <laughs> on the bus. No, it was a uh, good fun to do something so silly, but it is genuinely a product that we've. We, me, you, and John have been using. They gave us access codes what, two months ago or something before we started the sponsorship to actually get us to use it, so we can talk about it with some kind of, kind of authority. So, um, yeah, it's it's genuinely useful, and you know, we obviously get asked a lot about how do I now watch the football if today's game, for example, was on Peacock in in the US. You go to your VPN, you change your location to United States. You sign up to Peacock and then you can watch the Villa game. Somebody messaged me and said, "I signed up to NordVPN. Where's the Villa game?" It's like, well, they don't, they don't have it. It now allows you to kind yes. of go and find it, find it wherever you want to find it. So yes, thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring us. All the information is in the link down below. We've talked about like point game, points dropped. It definitely feels like points dropped, regardless of the technicality of being behind and coming coming back to get the point. It's only worth being. Getting our knickers in a twist over whether when Tottenham win, if, if <laughs> Man Tottenham United lose to Liverpool, exactly, yeah. if Man United lose to Liverpool, which we all expect they do, and obviously we're filming this at what six thirty on Saturday, this will come out on Saturday night. So we're all going to be hoping for that Liverpool win tomorrow. Obviously, Arsenal play Brighton now as well. We would like them to win just to keep that. You know, no one else to creep up behind us. <laughs> um, the Spurs one is interesting. Luton beat. Uh, Bournemouth today, yeah, and go Forrest gives bit, Forrest the incentive to go right. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe we need to at least get a point at, at, uh, at Spurs. Nuno going back to his old club. Like there's a little couple of storylines in there. If Spurs also draw tomorrow or lose, it'll actually be a point gained. Yeah, <laughs> by the end yeah. of tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? So 
I'm not going to get too upset yet. It's that, again, but it's that it's opportunity that miss. Water, 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 water. Yeah. We don't want to call it favours. We want destiny to be in our own hands as much as possible. And it was. I know, I know. My dad said on the way up, it's all well and good, kind of going, well, we've got away with it because they also lost. Yeah. But when they lose and slip up, we have to capitalise yeah. and win ourselves. And at the moment, we're not, not doing that. Yeah. So fingers crossed for <laughs> Forest and Liverpool wins tomorrow. And then this becomes a, an okay weekend in the end. But it could have been a brilliant one if we would open that gap up. I feel frustrated for Ollie Watkins. As I know, well. yeah, Morgan so, Rogers as well scores a, a brilliant yeah, goal that's going to be forgotten about. Then, he's, he's coming, then he's, he's, he trudges all the way around the pitch, doesn't he, when he's taking yeah. off. And it's almost like, that was my moment. I it's take, already gone. I wouldn't have taken him off either. I thought he was really good. I think that was his best game for us. Today. Took his goal brilliantly. I thought, I don't want to say defensive works, it's probably not quite that, but even just tracking back from... Oh, he's made, made pitch, one back. brilliant. He, him and Carlos in the first half, <laughs> made, made, yeah. each made a brilliant... Yeah. Brilliant kind of save and tackle on the fact that, <laughs> that Rogers has put in that graph to make up that ground. And yeah. The fellow who sits next to me says he's got a theory that Morgan, Morgan Rogers is groomed to become Ollie Watkins' long term replacement. Oh, really? To play as a, play as a, as a centre forward. And he's got a good finish on him, but I'm not quite sure about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Listen, he's a young man, isn't he? So and hopefully Ollie Watkins is going, yeah. going nowhere fast. But um, yeah, he was, he was impressive. We did the really difficult. Work, yeah, okay. breaking down a solid team and going two and up. You kind of go, well, that we've done that, we've done the hard bit now. Just throw that away. It's so maddening, and I don't want to feel like I'm laughing about it because I'm not bothered about it because it is gutting to not not see the job through. But do you have just, an opinion on who is at fault for the goals that we can see? I didn't think Cons have played great. A lot of them came down Cons as Cons as side, but again. I so it's a combined effort, I think. There's other, other opportunities after the cross comes in yeah. to, to deal with it as well. I would like to have seen the goals, you know, a couple of minutes before we started, just to refresh my memory. But, yeah, I don't think Comps played great down that right-hand side. I've said before, he's a better centre-half than he is a right-back. But that back-four combination of Dean, Powell, Carlos and, and Consa, we've not seen it very often. And when we have, we beat City and Arsenal in the space yeah, of a week. So we have the should, best yeah, probably control be enough, with, yeah. that back, with that back-four. But it is susceptible. It, it isn't perfect, and I suppose my main takeaway from t- tonight is that yes, it's an okay point, or it could be if Spurs go on to not win tomorrow. But I think it's evidence to suggest that there will be some weird things happen between now and the end of the season. We're all going off. Oh, Spurs have got Burnley and Sheffield United. Will they win them? Well, maybe they don't. Like, let's not look too far ahead and go. Well, we need this to happen and that to happen. You're going to see weird referee performances costing. You're going to see VAR things, getting things wrong. You're going to see stupid own goals or whatever it is. Yeah. You're going to see players where you think, oh, has he missed from there? And then go and, you know, we might lose to Bournemouth. And go, oh, what a disaster. And then beat Liverpool in our last home game and go, well, we expected to lose that one and win that yeah. one. We just did it in the other way around. So with the same yeah, points, what would be, will just be, go kind of wait. I know it yeah. sounds mad. Just go, oh, forget about it. Wait till the end of the season. But we're now at that point where... There's no point being mad now because next week, like we had when we lost to Man United, it's a five-point gap. Now it's back up to, was it 14 now to Man United as, as of tonight anyway? These things are going to flip and change. Like next week, maybe Tottenham do overtake us to fourth, but two weeks later, we do the reverse to them. So it's just a little bit of patience, I suppose. It felt like a kind of dagger blow I know. to me. I don't want it to be, It's you know, it's all, all bets are off now. It's... No, no, no. At all. I don't think it needs to be that final, but it did feel like, is this the weekend we'll be blowing it? That's, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it is, but I think I'm saying that's crept maybe. into my... Yeah. It didn't, when we lost at Man City, <clears throat> you know, when we got a point at West Ham, we were expected to win. Mm. I didn't feel... That's just those were that the best games to play now, I suppose. But I do Go feel through. like now... Is that fake? You're saying, ah, Villa fans, we you started to believe, and uh, I still <laughs> think you again. I still think we'll be good for fifth. It's just whether fifth is enough for the Champions League, which we will probably know in two weeks time, yeah. or we could know in two weeks time when the second leg of the all the European games are played. If Arsenal beat Bayern Munich and West Ham beat Leverkusen <laughs> and we beat Lille and Liverpool beat whoever they play, fifth will probably be enough. And I still think we'll finish at least fifth. Yeah, I think it comes back to, again, we've said this lots of times about Emery and wanting to be in control and control the controllables and that kind of thing. I back us to finish fifth. I do, yeah. But it's out of our control whether finishing fifth is enough reward. Yeah, well, winning the Conference League will go a long way to helping it. 
a yeah. little bit. So we, it is still in our hands yeah. to an extent. But if the German teams go all the way through as well, that's obviously bad news for us. So come on, Arsenal, come on, West Ham. Like we need, we need favours in that instance. But yeah, I'm not mega doom and gloom now. There's not enough to, not enough has happened today for me to go. Oh, that's it. We're going to blow it. We're going to lose the next three. We're going to lose the next four. Because I don't, I don't think that will be the case. We tend to bounce back after you know, box on the nose pretty well. So, you know, if, if we go to Arsenal and get something next week, that'll be a, a, a result that people wouldn't be expecting. But it's not, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. It's like much harder than that. Double Double Louise. Louise. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it just feels... I think I'm still hungover from, from your wedding. <laughs> so, think... Oh, God. Thank you very much for watching or listening to this episode of the Climate Room Podcast post-match reaction. Hopefully the audio is okay because I've absolutely winged it once again. Next time, if we're going to do it in person, I think I'll bring my own mic and we can have our own Bounce setup. Sure, yeah, probably. exactly that. That'd be nice. Plenty of stuff coming up on Claret and Blue. Stay positive. There's still a long way to go. Uh, thank you for watching this one and we'll see you again very soon.